Measuring tools are often designed to um, standards that are consistent with what those tools are used for. Right? So, uh, say for example, uh, this yardstick, which is um, generally used for things like um, rough carpentry, um, has one side that has um, divisions that are an, uh, segmented by an eighth of an inch. And on the opposing side, it has divisions that are, um, uh, that occur twice as frequently that are uh, 16th of an inch increments. So the, the specificity of this tool is largely informed by what it is generally used for. So in, in contrast to that, we have something like these, um, uh, like these micrometers, which are used by um, um, engineers and machinists. And those have a specificity of measurement that's in on the order of magnitude of 10 thousandths of an inch. So it's important that we um, pick a tool that's appropriate for uh, that task at hand. Uh, some um, tools give you a combination of both um, metric standards and fractional standards on that same tool so that you can um, uh, see the correspondence between those or pick the language that you're most, uh, or standard that you're most uh, comfortable um, working with. Tape measures are a good example of um, tools that are designed for a specific application or purpose. And um, so let's look at some of the features that we find uh, commonly on tape measures. So tape measures are defined by their overall length. Um, they usually have indications for a continuous measurement of inches. So here we can see that we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten on up of those inch indications. It also commonly gives you a measurement of the foot plus inches as a sub measurement. So here you can see it's one foot, one foot one inch, one foot two inches. And then it also typically has a measurement that's indicated by a, a red um, diamond or a red triangle or a red box around um, the number indicating the length that corresponds to the standard placement of two by four studs in a stud wall. So studs occur every 16 inches. So here we have a red diamond at 16, a red diamond at 32. So the tool is very much um, designed or engineered for uh, whatever the application of that tool is. So um, as cute as this is, um, it's not what you're going to commonly find um, in the marketplace or, in a, a, or on a job site. What you're most likely to find is a tape measure like this. Again, it has some of the same features that we talk, talked about before. The increments of measurement are um, um, typically not less than a sixteenth of an inch because it's really not that important for rough carpentry to measure less than a sixteenth of an inch. Here we see the stud centers marked at 16 with the red box and again we have a continuous graduation of accumulating inches and then we see feet plus inches listed up on the top of that. Um, uh, tape measures like this will commonly also have a locking mechanism that allows you to hold the tape out in an extended position and, um, and a belt clip so that it can be conveniently clipped onto your tool belt or onto your uh, uh, pants for easy reach. Another example of a, a, a simple uh, measuring device that's commonly used in, um, in um, uh, construction of stud walls and in um, rough carpentry in general is what's commonly referred to as a speed square or sometimes it's called a, a, um, a, a rafters angle square and uh, 
again, this is commonly used by um, uh, carpenters that are uh, doing um, uh, building out walls or that are building roof structures and rafters. And um, so it's giving us a proper perpendicular relationship between two edges. Um, it's giving us a lip that can hang over the edge of a two by four so that we can use that as a saw guide when we're doing cross cuts on the material. It gives us um, notches or cutouts that allow us to insert a pencil and be able to mark a continuous line that, again, corresponds to the common measurements used for that practice. In this case, we have a three and a half inch mark, which is the standard width of a two by four. Up along the top shoulder, we have notches that allow us to be able to seat our pencil in place and drag it along the surface to create parallel marks. Let's put a name to a few more of these tools that are used for measuring and marking. Um, here we have what's called a uh, carpenter's square or it's often referred to as, as a framing square as well. Um, and there's all kinds of um, uh, language etched into the surface of this that allows us to make common measurements from inside edges, to check for perpendicular relationships, measurements along those outside edges, and then a series of scales that are used for, um, for, for, for framing roof lines and rafters. Um, one of the um, advantages of a, a, a framing square like this is it's giving you a a lot of surface area to be able to look at and check perpendicular relationships between edges because the more surface area you have, um, the more accurate it's going to be, uh, assuming that it's being treated with kindness and not getting bounced or dropped around, which would compromise or its, uh, its a ability to maintain this perpendicular relationship. And when you hear me say square, square refers to a perpendicular relationship between two edges. So we have a carpenter's square or a framing square. Um, beautiful little mahogany handled um, tri-square. And um, one of the interesting things about tri-squares is that um, the measurement for the zero starts on the inside edge and runs out. We also have um, combination squares, which is, I think, you know, it's one of my all-time favorite tools for measuring and marking for both um, woodworking and metalworking applications in a um, uh, uh, studio shop. So a combination square gives us a combination of a, a ruler. That ruler is, it has a keyway that um, is that allows the ruler to be to slide back and forth to establish um, precise length relationships between the head of the square and the length of the ruler. This particular ruler, because it is used for um, for um, machinist applications, uh, gives us uh, uh, the uh, a series of four different um, divisions. On the uh, top side, we see we have divisions of eighth inch increments. On the bottom side, 16th inch increments. On the opposing side, 32nd inch increments. And on the top side here, 64th inch increments. It's giving us a perpendicular or square relationship at 90 degrees here, a 45 degree relationship here. So. That's great for being able to uh, check between corresponding angles to make sure that they're accurate. Left is loose and slides, right is tight and it's secured. And they most commonly also come with a um, scribe that mounts into the base of the head and a small bubble level. Um, the, the, the quality of a combination square again, should be geared for your practice. So uh, this is not something that I would carry around on a job site. It's a tool that I would be most likely uh, be a bench tool where uh, it's a more controlled environment. 
combination squares um, can also accommodate a range of other different accessories, including things like this center finder or this uh, protractor head that also includes typically uh, a bubble level 